all right um love ones connecting with me once again i'm here to share a very short word with you this is henry do you do a your author uh your blogger and uh your leader and um i just finished writing an article titled how africa can unite and prosper how africa can unite and prosper so I just want to um, give you the article, how I wrote the article. So that's the title of the article, How Africa Can Unite and Prosper. So can Africa unite? As I thought through this statement, I felt an inner voice telling me to write. It is possible Africa can unite and prosper before sharing these strategies we can employ to unite Africa, I will dismantle some allegations about Africa's unity. Some people believe that Africa cannot unite because of these reasons. Now, these are the reason why. Now, I'm going to share with you dismantling the allegations of Africa's unity. Number one, the population barrier. At the time of writing this article, Africa has more than 1.4 million, uh, 1.4 billion people. China has more than 1.4 billion people. America has more than 340 million people. Europe has more than 7, uh, uh, 40 million people. I get you. So, if you check the statistics, Africa has more than 1.4 billion. China has more than 1.4 billion people. America has more than 340 million people. Europe has more than 7, 740 million people. If America, Europe, and China with these populations could unite and prosper, why can't uh, we as Africans unite? It is possible Africa can unite. Population is not a barrier. Instead, it is one of the most powerful weapons to strengthen Africa. Do you know that America has 35 countries? That is status. Mm -hmm. You know that America has uh, 35 kind of 35 states. Do you know that Europe has 50 countries? Upon these numerous countries, they are working together. Why can't Africa develop together? Africa has 54 countries. Africa can unite with other countries. Um, Africa can unite if other countries have done it. If China with a population of one point over 1.4 billion can work with a governor. Why can't Africa unite and prosper? We can unite as Africans. We need to understand what unity is about. Unity does not mean we forsake our values. Unity is about the common ground. We are united to prosper as a continent. We still hold on to our faith. The mindset should be on the growth and productivity. This mindset will break the allegations of the people uh, who disbelieve in the unity of Africa. Now, number two reason, that is the cultural difference. The cultural difference. Some people believe that Africa cannot unite because of our cultural differences. Well, I have good news for you. Africa can unite despite our cultural differences. I'm a Ghanaian. There are many tribes in Ghana. However, we live in peace. There will be some people who will not agree to live in peace despite the peaceful environment. We cannot maintain a 100% peaceful environment, even in some families, disagreement occurs. However, the family agrees on a common ground. Therefore, people who argue that Africa cannot unite because of cultural differences should stay quiet. We can unite despite our cultural differences because others have done it. Number three is a language difference. Uh, Africa speaks different languages because of colonizations. However, we can unite. With modern technological equipment, we can translate our languages, we can learn each other's language, we can use interpreters when transacting businesses. It is all about the heart and the mindset. Now, in, in number four, that is a um, religious uh, difference. You can see, as we all know, most of the modern, the northern part of Africa is Muslim, mm? while the southern part of Africa is Christian. 
that shouldn't be a barrier. We are running or we are uniting on a common ground. It is about productivity and prosperity. Our focus is to build our economy, not religion. When we have the mindset that it is not about the religious difference but development, religion will not hinder us. Christians should focus, mm, focus on their faith while transacting business with Muslims, traditionalists and other religious groups. The same applies to Muslims and other religious groups. The common ground is Africa's productivity and prosperity, not religion. I'm a Christian. I have friends who are Muslims. You pray to your God, I also pray to my God. However, our common ground for unity is the economy's productivity. Now, number five uh, allegation about um, Africa unity is that uh, the struggle for one authority figure to control African countries. That is what the struggle for one authority figure to control African uh, countries. If America can have a leader that governs different countries or different states, why can't Africa do that? All we need is a selfless, faithful, God-fearing vessel interested in Africa's unity and prosperity and a desire and what and a decisive leader who will not succumb to the deception of foreign powers. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was an example. I firmly believe some leaders are more passionate than Kwame Nkrumah. If we get a leader with the stated qualities, that leader can lead the United States of Africa without the interference or the deception and the bribe of the foreign powers. Now, the strategies we can use to unite and prosper Africa. So these are the strategies that we can use to, to unite and prosper Africa. Number one is that the spiritual strategy, the spiritual strategy. We cannot build without breaking the ground. To unite, we must first break the unseen powers that fight Africa's unity and empowers Africa's disunity. Various religious groups will embark on long fast and pray. You will fast and pray to, to dismantle the evil spiritual forces and wicked powers that do not want Africa to become one. You will also embark on the prolonged fasting and prayers to achieve unity. We will fast and pray until Africa unites. Number two, the leader strategy. Prominent leaders, that is primarily it should be president and lawyer influencers, from all African countries who occasionally organize a conference to share ideas. The main theme of the meeting will be based on mind transformation. The leaders will be mandated to educate their sub-leaders on the importance of unity and the power of Africa's natural resources. The sub-leaders will also educate the people under them on the power of unity and the power of Africa's natural resources. Every media center in Africa will educate the public, organizations, and institutions about the power of Africa's unity and the power of our natural resources. We will educate the public on how the natural resources can grow the economy. We will train Africans on how to utilize these resources. For instance, it is estimated that the natural resource in Congo amount to over $24 trillion just for Congo. What about the wealth of other African countries' mm, resources? So if we radically educate the public, organizations and institutions on the importance mm, of our natural resources and how we can use this resource to change Africa into a glorious field, the Africans will be interested in unity. Mm. For instance, Africa has natural resources such as oil, gas, nature for tourism, coal, charcoal, gold, silver, lead, iron, or cobalt, zinc, manganese, diamond, bauxite, cocoa, uh, titanium, zinc, copper, sand to generate solar energy, that's unlimited power, sugar, salt, uranium, petroleum, and African billionaires, prominent leaders and financial institutions in Africa will come together and plan on how we can process these natural resources in our continent. African billionaires, leaders and financial institutions will unite and create our satellite for technological advancement. Mm? We will unite for our technological advancement. We will create industrial plans for mass production. We will have our own Google. We will agree to build our technological database for advertisement and research. 
they will set up institutions that will train professional engineers and business-minded people. We will have one currency. We will educate the Africans on the benefits of trading within ourselves. We will alert Africans to why and how America, Europe, China are becoming great. One reason America, Europe, China and other African countries outside Africa are great is that they use African resources to build the economy. Why don't Africans trade within themselves? The billionaires and financial institutions will become one and invest in Africa. We will build libraries, stock with resourceful books in various communities and empower the public to love reading. It is not only in school that we can read, we can read in our chambers. So number three strategy, the military strategy. The military strategy. Mm. Africa has over 1.4 billion people. That's power. We will train a great military group and equip them with modern weapons. Their duty is to oppose external forces interfering with Africans' unity and prosperity. The military will protect Africa's interests with all their power. Number four strategy. The intelligence strategy. The intelligence strategy. We will set up committee and organization. Uh, we will set up a committee as an organization with high intelligence and emotional power. Mm. They will monitor and eliminate betrayers and intruders who will try to disorganize Africa, disunity, and prosperity. They will deal with people and organizations that advocate Africa disunity. These people must be voracious readers. They must be masters in every field. They will work online and offline all day and all night. Number five, the wisdom strategy. We will research how America, Europe, and other United countries came together. If possible, we will improve on their unity strategy. We will not use satanic strategies if they use such principles to unite. Number six, the wealth strategy. We will pick millionaires and billionaires from various African countries who will invest in Africa's unity and natural resources and development. Financial institutions in different African countries will also play a, an essential role in investment. Number seven, the media strategy. As stated, every television station, radio station, podcaster, and famous influencer online and offline in Africa will continuously educate the public on the power of Africa's unity, how our resources can grow in Africa, the power of one currency, why we must trade within African countries, and the power of one African passport. Me, I say with you, boy, I a very, very powerful statement here. Number eight, advocacy of reading. I emphasize this point again. Various leaders and all media centers in Africa will radically and continuously educate the public on the power of reading resourceful books. For example, entrepreneur books. Mm. Media centers in Africa will radically educate the public on informal education. That is, we must develop a habit of reading our own, mm, on our own. I encourage you, child of God, neither hearing me to download my book, 777 on common benefits of reading books. That is my book, Henry Judy Appear Crying. It's titled 777 on common benefits of reading books. And also titled uh, How African and Poor Countries Can Develop. How African and Poor Countries Can Develop by Diodu Henry Appear Crying. So read those books. They are all free on my blog. Number nine strategies that, that is, I call it the lost strategy. The loss strategy, that is L O S S, the loss strategy. Various leaders and all media centers in Africa will educate the public on what we have lost because of our disunity and further explain to them that we will lose if we keep this, uh, disuniting. We lose natural resources and trillions of funds yearly to foreigners who are not really interested in Africa's growth when we live in this unity. These funds and resources could have been used to build Africa if we're united. Therefore, we Africans will educate the public on the danger of this unity so the Africans will be aware. Number 10 strategy. I call it the independent strategy. I love America. 
Europe, China, and other countries. However, I stand by my word. This is Africa's problem. We Africans will not in any, any way involve Americans, Europeans, or any countries in Africa's unity. Africa's unity is for loyal Africans who desperately want Africa's unity and prosperity. No interference, loophole for intruders and then for betrayers. Strictly trusted African leaders and influencers will build Africa's bridge. If we Africans identify a sincere and loyal foreigner who wants Africa development and unity, we may consider an other foreigner. However, we will monitor that foreigner with tiger eyes, heart and mind all day and all night. Number 11, the advocacy of sincerity. Various leaders and media centers in Africa will educate the public to disregard this honest Africans who have no interest in Africans unity and development. For instance, the public must reject people who use deception, bribes and temporal things to get power or to get vote. We Africans will not accept any deceptive aid to build Africa. We Africans will only vote for tried and tested African leaders, selfless, God-fearing and courageous leaders into power. So that is how we Africa uh, can. And I have several PowerPoint, I have several keys out there, but this is enough for you and I so that we can employ to grow our economy Africa. So this once again, this is Henry Diodu Apiakran, and I encourage you to, to check on my blog www.rockofheaven.com and download my books for free, How African and Poor Countries Can Develop. Uh, if you read my books, it will help you in your life. So, child of God, I end it here and I'll see you again.